Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. We've got locker on the guitar and it's starting to look amazing. But we have to let that sit for a couple of weeks before we can do any of the buffing or the wet sanding, anything like that. That locker really needs to cure. So in the meantime, we are going to build a bridge. Not a plain old boring standard Martin type bridge. We are going to build a two-tone, two-color bridge. So stick around. To make this bridge, we actually need two different pieces of wood. How I determine the colors I'm going to use is pretty simple. I'll take the color of the back and the sides, which in our case is walnut, and that'll be one piece of wood. And then I'll take the color of the binding, which in our case is curly maple, and I'll use that for the other piece of wood. So the next thing was to find some wood. This is what we used for the binding and everything else on the guitar that was maple. But I don't want to use this piece of wood because it's just long enough for binding. And if I cut off a piece that's long enough for a bridge, then it's no longer useful for binding. So I want to keep this piece uh, for future use. So I dug through my scrap pile of wood over there and I found another piece of curly maple. And I think it has just as much curl as this piece, but it also has some nice straight grain lines coming this way too. So I'm going to use that piece. And I'm going to put the light part on the top rather than the bottom because I don't want to have spruce on the bottom and then maple. There's no contrast there. So I'm going to have the spruce, then walnut, then we'll put the maple on top of that. So this will be the top of our bridge. So for the bottom, I also found another piece of walnut in my scrap pile. And it has some nice straight looking grain down on this end. So I'll probably use right about here for the bottom and right about, uh, probably right about there for the top. So let's get busy. I started by making layout lines to follow at the bandsaw. Then I cut the pieces to length and width and then finished them off by cutting them to the rough thickness that I was going to use. I used the drum sander to get our pieces down to our final thickness. This, um, this bridge can be a little tricky to make, so I've got a couple of different templates that I use, little jigs for the router table. And uh, this one is the hard one with these little curves here. If I tried to router that, um, it's going to break this piece like 99 times out of 100. So what I have to do first is I'm going to get this drawn on here and then I'm going to go to the, the uh, drill press and I'm going to drill a hole for each of those two spots. So I know um, those will be taken care of real easy on the drill press. Then this, is, this area here and this area here are both real danger zones when I'm routering this. I can't tell you how many times I've had the router catch the, the grain of the wood and just split it right in half. So I always get very, very nervous when I have to work on this piece. This one's not so bad. This one's a bit of a troublemaker. So let's start by uh, just making our pattern here. I'll just draw it out. Now I'm going to leave it in this because I want to mark these centers the best I can. So I'm going to get the proper drill bit, slip it in here where I can get it aligned push it down, poke it, and make a, make a mark so I can drill exactly in that spot. And do the same thing over here. Looks like that edge is a little, yeah, that one's even got a curve on it. Let me go straighten this out real quick on the sander. All right, so we've got a straight edge there now on both sides. Now I can pencil this out. I can rough cut this out on the bandsaw. And I'll rough cut the this one out on the bandsaw after I make these holes. Now I can mark these holes real quick just with a 5 8 bit. I like using a Forzner for this rather than a regular twist bit because there's a lot more surface area to ride against my jig. More likely to get accurate. I want to go straight up and down. Uh, you're not going to have the best view, but I want to make sure I'm putting that point as close to the right place as possible. So now I can take this out. I can go to the drill press, line up that hole with that point there, 
and I should have a nice accurate cut. Now yeah, this chipped on me a little bit. If I glue this side down that would be up. Um, just trying to decide whether I can sand that out or not. I don't know. Don't know if I can. And I don't want to chance it so I'm going to make another one of these because that's a pretty deep chip right here. Um, I guess I could glue that back on top. But just as easy to make a new one. Alright, take two. I knew I should have had a backer board the first time. I was just too lazy to run and grab one. Let's do the scary one first. In case we have to rebuild it. Guys, you have no idea how nervous I get when I have to make this cut. But if you've ever had an incident where the router just rips a chunk of wood out of your hand, you'll know exactly what I mean. And it's happened to me dozens of times making this one particular part. It's just a really tricky part to make. Yeah, we have our rough bridge. But we've got one more thing we have to do. See how this doesn't match that? We need to put a, a bevel on this piece. And there's a trick to doing it. Here's the problem. We have to have a bearing right on that surface. And if we use the bearing just as it is, we're not going to cut much of anything. It, it would be pointless even trying. So what I have to do is I double sticky this onto my template that I showed you earlier. And then I can ride this bearing on the template. And then I can get a nice 45 degree cut on there. So that's what we'll do. Now with that on there, now I have a surface for the bearing to ride on and I can cut a bevel on this piece. Even though I used a template, uh, this transition into this curve doesn't always come out perfectly smooth. It's not bad over here, but it's still, it's not perfect. It still needs a little bit of work. So before I glue my two pieces together, I need to get this sorted out. There we go, that's a nice smooth transition. This also works really good for getting rid of burn marks. We still ended up with a little bit of chip out on one side, even with our backer board. But that's okay, I'll put this on the top I'll use this as my glue surface so I'll get a nice clean joint. And I always round this kind of stuff over and do some shaping anyway, so I'll get rid of that then. Now it's important to get this thing lined up correctly and how I align it is I use this edge and this edge and I put them right up against the bevel. See that? So I'll glue those right like that. Now that leaves this end sticking out, that's fine. I've got more shaping to do there. It leaves this end sticking out and that's fine too. It also leaves it so it's not quite straight here, but that doesn't matter. We'll square that up after. So let's get some glue on this thing. Now I don't want a lot of squeeze out on this thing, so I'm gonna show you a trick that I use to kind of reduce the amount of squeeze out I get. I'll take my finger on the edge and I'll just draw it around the outside edge like this and push that glue back. Now I may still get some squeeze out, I probably will, but I'll have a lot less. It'll be a whole lot easier to clean up later. I don't want to be smearing this all over the place either, so I'm going to be really careful how I set it down. The more it squirts around, the more cleanup there's going to be. So I'm going to get a clamp just on the end.
that still looks good it's lined up nice get another clamp on the other end I just want to get it tacked in place before I go too crazy on my clamps see look at the squeeze out we got down there so we're still gonna have plenty of squeeze out we still have lots of glue okay now I can go ahead now that it's tacked and it's not gonna move around I can put a whole bunch more clamps on here turn this one to go this direction Wait, get one back here for balance got one more here one more here turn this one around the other way the timer's going off so let's see what we have all right now I'm going to get this glue cleaned up while it's still soft and it's easy to get out of there I like to speed up my carving process by doing a lot of the big stuff on the on the belt sander first. I'll get the front edge squared up first, then I can knock down some of those oversized pieces. After that I can start on some of the rough shaping. So now you can see they're quite a bit thinner and they're looking pretty good. So the next thing that I'm going to do is start angling these little tabs here back. Uh, so they blend in a little bit better. Then the rest of it we'll do inside with files and chisels and rasps and sandpaper. That kind of nicked up our bottom edge, so we'll have to eh, reshape that a little bit. But we can do that with um, we'll do that with some rasps. I reshaped the back curve. It looks pretty symmetrical to me. I think it actually looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to shape is this little corner in here on both sides. I'm also going to put a little round over back here. I don't want a sharp edge there. And I'm, on, I'm going to round over this a little bit as well on both sides. We have the rough shape. I still need to round over this edge and a little bit there and up here, but I'm going to get that with sandpaper. What if we put some naphtha on this thing? So we get our color scheme going, and it goes right about there on a 12 fret. Look pretty sharp. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you like it and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And we're one step closer to giving away this Baby Alien giveaway guitar. So if you have not entered to win the Baby Alien giveaway guitar contest yet, make sure you subscribe here. Go to my website, spenceracoustics.com. Just fill out a little two-line form. I need your name and your email address so I can contact you when you win. All right, we have a lot of fret work and fretboards and all that kind of stuff coming up in the next couple of episodes, so I will see you on Wednesday.